couldn't pass this IFL TV. Lawrence O'Coley sizing him up over there. This is a great fight, great fight. European cruiserweight, and Garber in the ring now. Lawrence is uh, sizing him up, he's had the fresh trim. He's ready. Uh, huge week. Huge week. For sport in general? Well, for boxing. Uh, so many of these fights on this card capable of being headline fights on their own. Of course, Burn Selby, of course, Chisora Price, Cody against Ngarbu, Connor Benson. Great, great card. Great card. So, brilliant card. Brilliant card. I think it's the best card we've got all year. Price Chisora. Do we agree that Price Chisora is a better fight than the Parker Chisora fight? Uh, In some respects? It's, it's got a lot more attention. I mean, it's two Brits. It's completely intriguing, but I'm getting started. I just had coffee with Adam Booth. And we were talking about it for 20 minutes about who's going to win, what do we think is going to happen in a fight. You could just debate it all day long, and that's when you know you've got a great fight. It's such a huge fight because the winner puts himself in a brilliant position in the heavyweight division. Not just in terms of his ranking positions, but just the perception of winning a big fight. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to watch that. But by the way, Progress Taylor is, for me, if not the fight of the year, one of the top three fights of the year. And I believe that he's going to be a monster, monster fight. I think it is going to be fight of the year. You know, we've had already two fight of the year contenders in October on Sky Sports and DAZN. In Golovkin, Derevinchenko, Ritson against Robbie Davis. This will be another classic. It will be a classic. Can't be anything but. So it is a brilliant card. And you know, you know that I don't often oversell myself. Um, you know that I'll never hype something up if it doesn't deserve it. And I'm telling it's all jokes. You're not even laughing, you're not even moving your face, nothing. I'm listening to you, mate. But you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they were sarcastic. But what I will tell you is this is probably the best card I've ever done. And this is the card of the year, Saturday night at the O2 Arena. The best card you've ever done? That's a strong Top thing. to bottom. Top to bottom. I'll tell you what was up there with it. Was the show we did, Brooke Gavin, Selby against uh, Gradovich, Mitchell against Linares. There was another two really good fights on there as well. Rule Britannia. What? Rule Britannia. Rule Britannia, my son. Really? Yeah. Is that Mike Coppinger behind you? Yeah, bring him in. You got a bit nervous, drops his car. How are you doing, Mike? You know it's a big, you know it's a big <laughs> show so when this Mike man turns up. Coppinger is in town. Come that, on, buddy. you've got to tell us. You've got, a, you've got a mole somewhere, as we would say. He knows everything. moles everywhere. Yeah, he knows everything. Many moles. You know everything, didn't you? Um, I wouldn't go that far, but, you know. Right, I'm wrong sometimes, or what did Eddie say? I'm wrong like 85% of the time? Uh, yeah, you've changed that now. I like oh, you okay. more, so I'd say you're just wrong 50% of the time. 50? Right, the problem I'll is, you, you can plant things with Mike. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you, the best thing you do is you phone Mike and you go, Mike, don't tell anyone, right? But, and then it's like five minutes later, sources say. So, but do you ever you read one of his stories and go, how the fuck does he know that? Yes, loads of times. But the thing is, what he does really well is he weasels his way in with all these contacts and he's quite friendly with them and people like him as well. So they end up talking on a level and to be fair, he'll keep things confidential if you need him to. But most of the time, he'll put things out. And when you put it out as, I know we joke about sources, but sources is very clever because actually it ain't even got to be fucking true, has it? But most of the time, when copy just says sources, <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, I can't say that I've ever actually made something up out of thin air, just fabricated it. You should but try it, man. I'll do it all the time. I should try it. It'll, it'll be quite... I think it'll get the people going, you know? Yeah. What, what should we make up? Whoa. Look at Cody. Yeah, you two could really have people going, couldn't you? Not I think, anymore. I think we should have our own show, to be honest with you. We have yeah. to speak to the zone about it. Let's, get, mean, let's get it done. He's yeah. already done his Fox show. He's with The Athletic now. If you haven't subscribed to The Athletic, you need to do it. Great service. Look at that. And, uh, you know... Great to have the Coppinger in town. When's the last time you come to England for a show? I was here last year for the Anthony Joshua Povetkin fight at Wembley Stadium, so excited for this fight now. We have an American, Regis Progre. I know Regis really well from living in Los Angeles, and 
I think it's a do, great do you fight. sit on the fence on these fights? See, Coogan, he basically will never predict a fight oh, because right. you don't want to be turned down for an interview. So do you have a prediction for Progress Taylor? Yeah, I think Regis is going to win, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as easy as a lot of the Americans think. I think Josh Taylor is an incredibly skilled fighter, and I don't know why he's being overlooked. I think maybe because people he's don't really... being overlooked here. I think most people here think he's going to win, don't you think? Taylor? Yeah. 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 Maybe it's American bias, but if you look at sports books, even in the UK, Regis is almost a two to one favorite. So I think that shows. I mean, I think people are just really high on Regis's power and the way he took care of Relic. Josh Taylor's had a way better level of opposition. Great, I think yeah. he's a crafty fighter. I think yeah. some people are a little sour on Ladies him. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Londoner. I think it's going to be a controversial Lawrence decision. Cowley. Well, All right, Mike, thank and you for your time. It's a nice shirt you got on there and over. He's, 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 he's always got the polo next time as well. Thanks, Coogan. All right, mate. Okay. Sky need me. He's got to do some proper media over here. You've got a couple of minutes, I've got a couple of minutes. Ah, see? Um, Edward, you've seen um, training clips of Ruiz. Yeah. Trim down a little bit. I don't think so. No? A little bit? I don't think so. I thought he looked quite tubby. Okay. I thought he looked I thought he I actually thought he looked heavier than he did previously. Right, so what is it is it we've been told one thing and not really no, I mean, comparing make, make your own mind up. I don't think I, I, on that clip that I saw, which was him training in San Diego with Manny. I didn't think he looked, uh, you know, I, I didn't think that he looked um, slimmer than he did last year. There was one picture of him, like, leaning forward. We all know, because I do it all the time. The old lean forward, you know, with a little what? tuck back, with a, with a little power, can, can make you drop half a stone. Really? So, yeah, so maybe he's done that. Can we pick this up after you've done your yeah, scribe? I can't wait. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Cruz, right now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him to the ring with the trainer Tony Borg, fighting out of Barry Wales, 27 and 2, 9 now games. He's the former IBF featherweight champion of the world, Lightning, Lee Selby. <laughs> Selby. <laughs> Mate? Yeah, come on. Yeah, come. No. So much love everywhere, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I, I kind of observed you in Newcastle for about four minutes, and like people were just like coming up to you going, wow, Eddie, this is brilliant. Yeah, but they were absolutely <laughs> hammered. I was just like, Ed, mate, yeah, like, you know, Ed. What do you think happens when I walk off? Ed. Uh, Wanker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wanker. Fantastic. Thanks, See? thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean? Yeah. But on social media, it's just your like it's the biggest prick ever. Social media, is it? But it's like again, we talk about social media. What? We live in an age where people have the ability or access to tell you whatever you want. So it ain't ever going to be positive, is it? No, because people. Some, some, some of it is. Yeah, but generally, if you've got. You know, if you're a negative person, you ain't really got nothing going for you. You're not going to go out your way to say something nice, are you? You're just going to be that miserable, moaning, negative loser that you are and talk shit and horrible things about people. It's what it is. Listen, without the negative people, there will be no positive people. Without losers, there will be no winners. What one are you, Ed? Fucking winner, mate. Let's go back to Ruiz thing. So you don't think, I was just talking to Coppins today, he thinks he has trimmed down, you think he's heavier, he looks heavier. I, I thought, with that one clip that I saw, which was in San Diego, I thought he looked, yeah, I thought he looked heavy. I thought he looked a bit slower, actually. Maybe I'm just used to his speed now. But Tubby, you used the word tubby. He's a bit tubby, isn't he? I'm a bit tubby. You're a tubby. It's not. People pick up words that you use, like next week will be Hearn says Ruiz is tubby. Well, obviously he's fucking tubby, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, when you have to put your shorts on, people see the truth, he's a little bit tubby. Yeah. Listen, when I go on the on the beach and put the old swim shorts on, I'm a bit fucking tubby. Let's be honest, I mean, there aren't people looking at me going up and down, down the beach going, oh, look at Hearn, he's a machine. He's absolutely cut to shreds. They're going, that's that Eddie Hearn, he's a bit tubby, isn't he? So I'm just being honest. Oh, 
Oh god. Um, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, that's no, true. Um, you've still not announced anything for December seventh yet. Yeah. Officially on the undercard. What what's going on? Nothing really. Uh, I'm not going to do one. What? I've decided <laughs> I'm not going to do one. No, I've basically told you everything that's on, but we haven't officially Go on, announced hit it. Hit me for it. So, chief support. I'll just tell you two for now. All right. Which is Povetkin against Hunter. Done. Home main event. And I'll tell you another one. No, I'll tell you, it's quick. John O'Carroll. Good fight. Yeah. So that's a great fight. Wrap How that many up have you got on now? Uh, including Joshua? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six fights? Maybe seven. Yeah. Seven, including Joshua? Yeah. But one is a six rounder and one is an eight rounder. Are you using any of your American prospects? I know no. You... no. I mean, Ammo Williams wants to get out of there. But we'll see, we'll see. To be honest, because of the timing, um, we're not going to start the show, I think, till about 7 o'clock. And the main event's at sort of half 11, 12 o'clock, so it's not that many. I mean, five, 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 I think five championship fights. Are you going, yeah, to go in the UK on the 20th or 21st of December? Quite possibly, yes. Okay, where could that possibly be? Uh, could be up north. Up north? Definitely won't be in London. Uh, no, but we have to fit a next gen in as well. Is this on top of the next gen? Yes, there might be a Saturday night fight night on those dates you said. Um, yeah, and, and a next gen as well, around the same sort of time. So, so why hasn't that been Chavez and... Jacob. Why hasn't it been announced? Yeah. Because we're just finalising the date. There was a date change. There, there, there was a date change. Yeah, Lou, don't leave me hanging, bro. Oh! Right. Yeah, man, it's been a rough week. How you doing, Lou? Here he is, the legend. And I don't mean any that. hurt. <laughs> How are you, Lou? How you doing, Kogan? Good to see you always. You too, mate. Um, love you two together. Yeah. Old pals. Well, I know him since he was barely out of diapers, so we go way back. We do, we do, we, go way we back. do. Been a rough week, Yeah, obviously. I just to do, while you two two again, obviously the absolute tragedy in, in Chicago, and obviously you're as close as anyone to that situation. If you could say a few words about that, Lou. You know, um, we have a, this is a great fight card Saturday night. This is a tremendous card. This WBSS final with Regis and... and Taylor is one of the best fights of the year, and, and it's a great event for fans. Same time, there's a funeral going on in New York on the same day, and they're going to lay Pat Day to rest. That's where I'm going to be. Um, I'm going to be at the funeral on Saturday morning, and there's no flight that gets me back in time. Um, and it's one of those things that happens. Our sport is inherently dangerous. I, I already talked to Eddie about this. I've talked to other people about it. I think we all are in agreement that we have to take some serious looks at what we can do. We're never going to have a safe sport. I mean, it's a combat sport. And by the way, I mean, there are a lot of sports that aren't safe. And there's an assumption of risk by the great warriors that get in this ring, man. They're, they're assuming great risk because it's in their heart and they do it to entertain us. We have an obligation to try to make it somewhat safe. We can't make it safe, but we can make it safer. And I think lately there's been a, a bunch of tragedies, right? one after one and, and and pat was maybe the the, the last the, you know hopefully it's the last of a string um we're always gonna have a dangerous sport we can make it safer after we finish promoting what we're doing and, and we can sit down and talk about it. i know eddie's indicated his desire to do this i got a call from aram said the same thing al Heyman called me we had the same conversation i think everybody wants to feel like as an industry, we're doing everything we can to make it as safe as we can make it for the men and women that get in the ring, who, you know, not, may not always get it, but we care about deeply. We've made a living. Your, your father and your family made a great living in, in, in the sport for years. I've been in the sport since I'm a kid. Um, you know, we want we want to see it get safer. Now we're going to have to put in the work to get it there. Echo those thoughts, Eddie. Absolutely. I mean, I think I think everybody's always trying and. and the frustrating thing is I do believe the sport is a lot safer now than it was. But we're on the end of this run, hopefully the end of this run, of tragedies. And there's no real 
explanation for it. It's just that, unfortunately, it is a really dangerous sport. And we have to do two things. Is One is what Lou said, is we have to always constantly try and improve and make it safer for these guys, because they need protecting from themselves. That's why they need good managers and trainers and people around them, because these guys just love to fight. You know, we talk about, it's like Dave Allen the other day. If it was left to Dave Allen, he would fight anybody for any amount of money. But we have to make sure they're guided right. We have to make sure that things are as safe as possible. You know, and, and one thing that is, I'm quite passionate about is getting more scans. Because you don't know. You know when, you, when you achieve, when you have a scan, that scan can last for a certain amount of period. Uh, of just a couple of quick things. Before any fighter gets his license, whether it's in the UK or in the States or anybody at place on earth, there should be a scan that has to be taken before he gets that first professional license. So that there's something to compare those later scans to. Most young people yeah, don't have that, a scan for no happens. reason. The, the way we do it in the UK is, yeah. is that the scans are compared. So when there's a change to, an, to the original scan, right. that's when you stop boxing. Does the fighter have to get a scan before he's licensed to begin his career? Yeah, to, to get a license, you have to. You okay, have to we don't have that requirement. But, but, but one of the issues See, is... See, you may have, we also have state regulation. So there's more than half the states in the United States, you don't need any scans. All you need is an AIDS test and an eye test. So the states that really protect the fighter, a guy that's been knocked out six times can't just show a blood test and go in and get knocked out of seven. But it's not showing, so even over here in the UK, you would have a, your annual scan, right? Say you had a scan in January, and then you boxed in February, right? And you had a really tough fight in February. Yeah. You don't need another scan before right. you go into the fight. You don't know what right. happened in that fight. Do you know what I mean? But so, you know what? There's other dangers. You don't know what happens in spar. So there has to be, honestly, a trainer or a camp knowing a fighter was hurt seriously in sparring has to go to their promoter and, and tell them that. We, we don't know what we're not told. You know? Also, a fighter has to feel like he can say, I've, I'm hurt. I'm seeing double, I have a headache, you know, I can't continue without be, being accused of winning. And I'm guilty the same way everybody else is, of probably sometime having gone on social media and said, oh, that guy quit or he gave up or whatever. I'm not him. And you know what? No fighter has an obligation to get hurt for us. Give everything he has when he's healthy, sure, but not to get hurt for us. And, and, and if you're hurt, tell the truth. Your life's more important than this is. And the, and the other thing which me and Lou are talking about at the moment is to try and create some kind of project or scholarship to, con to continue his legacy. Because I didn't know Pat Day, but these guys did. And what I've heard about him is actually sensational. It's particularly how he was so inspirational to his community. And I think that is a, you know, Pat Day's not a typical guy who had a wife and children and this kind of stuff. He came from a great family and he didn't need to box, but he loved the sport. If you watch his, his last speech at a press conference, he said just that, I love this sport. You know, and he also I, said, my greatest desire is we all put on a great show, we fight to the best of our abilities and we all go home to our families. And he didn't go home to his family. Um, and that's really sad. And. Uh, it's been a couple of, uh, of weeks, but you know what? I, I I react emotionally to a lot of things, including this. Um, but I, I, I do believe that our sport has also saved more lives than it's cost. And, and the risks that are in it are inherent risks that we all are aware of. We gotta make it safer, but um, we have to also understand that, that we have a sport that will always, it's always been here. People have always been in combat sports since there were caves, and people draw, drawing on cave walls. And people will always engage in combat sports because there will always be a market for it and a demand for it. We gotta do the best we can within our, our dangerous little world. And we gotta look out for one another. And, and that includes, uh, you know, as you say, not forgetting a Pat Day and, and, and trying to want there to be a legacy for a Pat Day, but the greatest legacy we could provide to Pat Day and to, to Max, uh, you know, who, Dadashev, and to the other fighters, Hugo Santillan, and all the long list of fighters that have given their lives in this sport, is to do everything we can within reason to make it as safe as we can. Thank you, Lou. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you, Lou. Stop, man. Thank you. I want to talk to you about a couple. Just uh, picking this back up. Yeah. Eddie, what's the 
possibility that Dylan White still fights in December then? Uh, it's still being discussed. Still being discussed. Going to pick up with these guys this week. WBC convention taking place now, where a lot of people get their chance to canvas things in different weight classes. Uh, and one of the things we're canvassing is we want to, you know, obviously we're pushing forward with the mandatory for the winner of Fury against uh, uh, Deontay Wilder. Come on. Hey, you got you gooner now. That's everybody says I'm a gooner. I'm just trying to support, you know, London. Yeah, Regis had Spurs on, and then you've gone the other way. You know that that's his club, don't you? Yeah. It is? That's yeah. my club. So I'm with the wrong club right now. No, no you went with the wrong club. club. I'm with the right club. club. You went with the right club. I was going to say tomorrow, I was going to go and put on... Do you know who his club is? Leighton Orient. Leighton Orient, massive. They're much bigger than Arsenal. Let me get that. Let me get that jumpsuit. Yeah, jumpsuit. He wants to lay in the We don't. We don't do the tracksuit. We only do the shirt. Tomorrow, you got to wear the same one as the away kit as well. Okay. Look, <laughs> late in Orient. For the presser tomorrow, that's what I'm coming. Can you say late in Orient so we know that you've registered? Late in Orient. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Tomorrow, I'm gonna wear it at the presser. Let him rock up to it. Oh, it's raining. So, are you kind of waiting for any situation to be resolved before no, then? Before no, you we don't have to. No. I'd like it to be. I'd like it to be resolved today. Because I'm sick of people asking me about it. But so what was your last conversation it. regarding this? Nothing. Only with Dillian that they're waiting to hear back from UK. And we but were he told can fight? Be, yeah, of course he can fight. He's yeah. not suspended. He's, you know, he's licensed. He can fight anywhere he wants. But I'd still rather a statement came out. But again, his hands are tied and you know we want to... He has, to, he, has to, he has to fight, but he can't just wait for these people, but you know, I saw one yesterday about uh, Joe Joyce's opponent, I don't know if you saw that, Ivica Bakuri, just got banned. Oh yeah, yeah. It four like, years? Four years? Yeah, but it was a year ago or something, the, the fight, the test. So you kind of got to get better, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, three division world yes. champion Ricky Burns! Saturday They've got to get better with their reporting well and their speed. Ricky Burns and Lee Selby cannot wait for if this fight. Fights, are you going to put him on the Chavez Jacobs card? Possibly, he could fight there, could fight in Saudi. Everything's in place. He still could fight in Saudi. It's interesting. Okay. Could fight on the December 21 card. Could definitely going in the UK. Oh, definitely, but we're looking at oh, who's, Who are you looking to headline that one? Could be Dillian White, I just fucking told oh, yeah, you. Yeah, alright, alright. <laughs> but why up north for Dillian White? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe there isn't a venue available in the south. I'll think about these things, dude. Oh, so basically, you go, we're going to have another double header, aren't we? Probably what? Probably on the same night. Uh, or will you go on the same night, this mate? Would I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lovely. Yeah. Nice to know you're thinking of the fans, Ed. Saturday in December. I told you, I don't, I don't look on those levels. You don't what? Look on those levels. You do what you got to do, Ed. Don't worry about what you got to do. I'm not about to become popular, am I? What a legend he is. Ricky Burns, mate. He's such a great fight. Free weight world champion, still he, going. He is the hardest worker in the gym, unquestionably. But he's such a motivational individual. And he's looking sharp. He's going to put it on Lee Selby. Selby's got loads of loads of skill. Can he compete at 135 against someone as strong and relentless as Ricky Burns? We're going to find out, baby. Sad, isn't that? Yeah, who said? Who said? By the way, that blue light, am I looking at a smell? A little bit, yeah. Right. What can we do? You tell me that Usyk won't fight until he fights the winner of that fight? No. I mean, I'm not saying he won't fight, I'm telling you what my instruction is. Our next fight is for the WBO World Heavyweight title. Whoever's holding it. Yeah, I'd, I would love to give him another fight because there's so many great fights. I mean, I'll give him the winner of Chisora Price in February. Yeah? Because Chisora's obviously been talking about Usyk yeah, for a while. Chisora wants that fight. I mean, Price will fancy that fight. Uh, Alright, I suppose we'll uh, oh, catch up tomorrow. Right? We'll do.